You're listening to the Rewrite the Rules podcast. We are your hosts. My name is Harriet. I'm Beth. And I'm Natalie. If you want to work towards achieving true food and body image freedom, you are in the right place. Rewrite the Rules podcast is your survival guide to letting go of harmful societal expectations and unlearning any unhelpful beliefs that are stopping you from having a healthy and loving relationship with food and yourself. Our mission is to help you feel heard, understood and empower you to step out of the box and rewrite your rules so you can live life on your terms. Thank you for tuning in. Hello guys, welcome back to the podcast this week. This is episode 19 and I'm solo hosting this week so there's nothing to worry about. We'll be returning back to normal next week but I just thought I'd take this opportunity as it's probably going to be a bit of a shorter episode as obviously it's harder to have a discussion with just myself but I thought I would take this opportunity to give you guys a short and sweet and to the point sort of go-to guide for if you have binged. What do you do? What does the day after need to look like? Hopefully give you some reassurance and just some things that you might need to hear right now in your current mind frame and mindset. So those dealing with binge eating right now know that often, even when you are trying to repair your relationship with food, binges still happen and that is okay and that is normal. But I would love for you to be able to save and like use this episode as a tool um, on the day or the day after just to help realign your mindset. And hopefully, like I hope to sort of talk some sense into you and just kind of treat you guys as I would a client really and give you that same advice that I'd say to my girls. So I come from a place of having suffered binges continuously for many, many years, sometimes occurring once a week, sometimes multiple times a week. So I truly have been there. I've got the t-shirt. So let's get into it. Firstly, I want to begin by debunking something that I often hear following binges. And what you may be saying to yourself right now is I've gained so much weight. So let me be the voice of reason to tell you that no, you haven't. Obviously, any sort of weight alteration should not be feared anyway. But when we do grow up in a society that demonizes any sort of weight gain, it's easy for that to be the first fear that your mind jumps to. So what I want you to sort of remember is that, you know, this severe bloating of various different body parts, you know, there's sometimes sheer pain, discomfort and exhaustion that binges cause is not weight gain. It's literally your body coping with the fact that it's overconsumed. It's not permanent and this feeling will pass. The feeling of your body swelling is the fluids that your body is holding onto due to all the sodium rich foods that you may have consumed. Your stomach is feeling bigger because it's expanding and it's full of all the food that you've consumed. It's got to make room for it somehow. This then causes pressure and discomfort. You know, you are going to be feeling lethargic and tired right now because your body is literally focusing on working to digest all of this food. So you haven't gained X amount of weight. Don't bother stepping on the scales, please. That is what we call self-sabotage. And you are just trying to punish yourself even more. That is not a number that you need to know right now. Your body will return back to its normal state. I promise you no matter what sort of irrational panicked thoughts you're having right now, after a few days of normality in your routine, these uncomfortable and sometimes painful symptoms will disappear. I also hear things like, I'm never coming back from this. This has been my worst binge to date. Um, Other people will say, I've worked out all the calories that I've consumed within this binge. I definitely must have gained weight. And from someone who has thought all of these things, So I come from a place of nothing but understanding and compassion. You will come back from this binge. Your body will not drastically change. Give it a few days of consistent nourishing, consistent kindness. Things will calm. Since moving past the initial panic of what the hell has happened to my body, we've also got to cut out the thoughts of wanting to change the past or feeling awful guilt about what you've done or just constantly looking back. Like Harriet said in a previous episode, we often talk to ourselves after a binge like we've literally committed some sort of crime. Yes, a binge isn't the kindest of things that you could have done for your body, but punishing yourself for that isn't kind or helpful either. There's literally nothing you can do or say to undo yesterday and feeling any sort of negative emotions towards that isn't beneficial. We've really got to try and move past it, focus on the day ahead and start to forgive yourself. You may be thinking, 
I just had a lack of motivation or lack of discipline. That is why I binged. I'm here to tell you that you are incorrect. Now, I don't know your personal situation, but I know some of the main reasons for a lot of people's binges. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and we are going to do this together. So has something stressful happened to you this week? Are you using food as a coping mechanism or a comfort to feel better? Are there any foods that you've excluded from your current diet that when you binge, you are over consuming on them? Are you meticulously counting calories and weighing yourself right now? Could you possibly be excessively over exercising? Is there an event or a holiday coming up that you may be trying to diet for? Are there a list of foods that you are telling yourself you are not allowed? Have you been trying to restrict yourself to compensate for a previous binge? Or have you got a lack of structure right now and your life is lacking consistency? Obviously, there are various other reasons, but if you find yourself answering yes or relating to any of the above, then I hope it makes you realize that it was never about your discipline or how hard you were trying. Often, we literally don't have any control and no amount of motivation could have stopped it. So now you're hopefully taking the blame off of yourself and you've maybe pinpointed why this has happened in the first place. Now you have to think of what can you do now to prevent this situation from happening again? Have you been excessively exercising? Let's start to bring that down. Have you been excluding food from your diet? Maybe start to reintroduce some of them. Obviously, it's sometimes not as simple as this or as easy as this, but there's only so much I can help within a podcast episode without knowing everything about you. What we're looking for is starting points to build on. Sorry for interrupting the episode, but we just want to give a very quick shout out to our sponsors, us. If you're loving this episode and the podcast so far and want to support this podcast further, then head to the link in the show notes and show your appreciation by donating us a coffee. We'd massively appreciate it. There are also other ways to support us for free, like dropping us a rating and review on whatever platform you're currently listening to us on. If you're watching us on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. And you can, of course, follow us on Instagram. It's at Rewrite the Rules Pod and share our podcast with anyone that you think will love it. We do all offer our own coaching and therapy packages if you would like to work with any of us. All links to those and more info are all once again in the show notes. Now let's get back to the podcast. Next is hydration. So as soon as you get up that day, start consuming water. You might think that you want to avoid water to maybe offset the water weight and the bloating, but by allowing your body to be dehydrated, you're honestly only reducing your body's ability to function and digest all of the food. Depending on when you guys like to have a shower, I feel like it's heavily debated which one is right or wrong. I'm personally an evening gal, but like Harriet said in a previous episode, having a shower can be the best way to like mentally and physically reset and just get in a better mindset seeing the day as sort of a fresh slate ahead. So I definitely recommend having a nice, quick little shower that morning. Moving on to breakfast. So a lot of you will try and avoid this meal. And I understand why you sort of think, I've got so much food in my belly, I'm still not hungry. My body can't possibly want any more food after everything that I've eaten. But it's not about that. It's about consistency. Even having something that is really small, just getting back into a good routine with food is key. You deserve to eat breakfast. You deserve to fuel your body. Just having something that is neutral, that is balanced for your stomach. Because, you know, if you go back into restriction mode, or even if you think, I'll just reduce what I'm eating today, like purposely making a conscious effort to restrict a little bit, and you think, I'll just get back to normal on Wednesday which is honestly something that I used to tell myself as well. I was like, I'll only restrict for two days. It won't have that big of an impact. You've got to realize that you are then already on the path leading yourself back to your next binge with this behavior. The key is always to try and return back to normal and return back to that balance. Take this balanced approach with all of your meals from today onwards, because it's not just about dealing with how you feel right now, but it's also about trying to prevent it from happening again. So try not to exclude any foods, make an effort to make your meals as balanced as you can, include the vegetables, include the carbs, include the fats, still have that dessert if you normally have dessert. Don't cut anything out. Just because you've overconsumed, it doesn't mean that you don't deserve to still continue eating 
all the foods or that you have to avoid social occasions and things like that this week. Allow yourself to do it all. Following on from returning back to normal, some of you will be wondering, how do I exercise today? Now, with this, it all comes down to purpose. If you are thinking, I can't wait to go out and burn off all these calories, then I'd suggest a less intense, slower, more mindful form of movement. I want you to avoid any compensatory mindsets, especially when you are possibly feeling super uncomfortable in your body right now. Take a walk, do some stretching, do some yoga. However, I do realize how essential movement is for a positive mindset. So if you feel like a workout is going to be the best for your mindset, just making you feel a little bit better, go ahead, but please make sure that it's not excessive. Maybe limit the amount of time that you are working out for. Don't do as much as usual or possibly join a class so that you've got that social boost as well, but you don't have the opportunity to overdo it. Everyone is different, but it all comes down to your mentality and your purpose. Either way, something like a walk is always recommended because the last thing we want for you to do right now is to sit there moping and just being really hard on yourself and really down in the dumps. Doing something slow like walking is going to be super good for your digestion. Moving on to looking after yourself. Now, obviously, I hope you're doing this for yourself anyway, but really be kind to yourself today. You haven't done anything wrong. You haven't failed in any way. So just treat yourself as you would a best friend who is a little bit down and just in need of a bit of support. Allow yourself to rest, catch up on your favorite TV program, you know, play your favorite game, take time to run yourself a really nice bath or paint your toenails, like as cliche as some of it maybe sounds. Find your little pockets of peace and things that make you feel really good and do them. Utilize tools like journaling and meditation. It doesn't cost anything with like the current access. We've got two materials online and it can't hurt either. Speak to yourself kindly. Don't be disappointed in yourself because I promise you that no one is disappointed in you. You are the only person that is going to be this hard on yourself. And just a final note before I end this episode is to have hope. I vividly remember feeling like I was never going to be able to make a change. My life was never going to get better, that I was programmed to eat like this and this was going to be my eating habits for the rest of my life. So I'm telling you that this isn't just your personality. You don't have to be in this cycle forever. There is hope for you to change. And yeah, I really hope that this episode made you feel a tiny bit better. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you next week. Bye guys.